Okay, uh, torque and cross product part three. Let's see if we can't get this done in, with just one more part. Uh, we're, there's three videos on torque because torque is so important in ro in rotational motion. It's it's the counterpart to force. So force is a huge deal in in linear motion mechanics, the mechanics of linear motion, while torque is equally important for rotational motion. Okay, so um, where we ended up last time was that we, I was trying to convince you that um, if that's the axis and, and there's a meter stick being held up, that when you let go, it swivels down because gravity is pulling down on it and so that puts a torque on it. How much torque does it put on it? R cross F. And so that would be 5 newtons. Since it's all perpendicular to the lever arm, that's a right angle. Five newtons times a half a meter, so we get two and a half newton meters. It doesn't matter if we're taking the part of F that's perpendicular to R, or the part of R that's perpendicular to F, when they're both perpendicular to each other, either one gets you there. Okay, but... Once the meter stick starts to, to go down... Notice it's gaining some speed here, and I put motion marks here to show a little motion. And um, I do mean this one to be longer than this one. You know, point A, point A is going faster than point B. And that's because of the bridge equation. You know, the bridge equation, you know, how V tangential is equal to omega R. Well, they both have the same omega right now. They have the exact same amount of omega right now, but they uh, this one is further away. A being further away, it has a bigger R, so it's just going faster. A bug here is traveling faster tangentially than a bug right there. A bug at the axis isn't even moving. That's because his R is zero. Okay, so let's find the torque right now. The torque right now um, is a little bit more complex because um, mg is still straight down. That's 5 newtons. And um, what I'll do is um, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use my line of action. That's my line of action. And so I'm going to take the part of R. Here's R from the axis to the point of application. And I'm going to take the part of R that's perpendicular to the line of action. And so um, that's a right angle. And so if this is a half a meter, then this is a half a meter times the cosine of 30 degrees. So the torque right now is going to be a half a meter times the cosine of 30 degrees times 5 newtons. That's the, that's the magnitude of the torque. I'm not talking about the direction of it yet, but that's the magnitude of it. Okay, now um, it turns out that as you go, notice that you're really only taking a part of the force then that is causing the twist. It's just not as much torque. You could have, you could have instead of done, doing that, the, the effective lever arm, you could have just found this force. It's this force, whatever this is, times um, the whole lever arm. It'd give you the same thing. Hey, when the meter stick is in this position, it's going even faster. But um, if you look, the net torque, even though it's going the fastest here, uh, the, the force of gravity, 5 newtons, is straight down. And the lever arm is straight down. Uh, that's a half a meter. So I, I mean, for, here, let me make the vector really big. That's a vector. Here's a vector. And how much of F is perpendicular to R? None. So the torque right now is equal to zero newton meters. It's not gaining any omega right now. It's not gaining or losing any angular speed right at that point. Keep that in mind because you can't use, for something like this, a problem like this, you can't use the, the um, kinematics equations for constant alpha because it doesn't have a constant alpha because the torque on it is not the same.
Okay, one other thing. Um, I'd like to, you to see something about strings when they're wrapped around wheels or pulleys or what have you. When strings are wrapped around wheels or pulleys um, or maybe a, a chain around a gear, like on a bicycle, uh, they're very easy to deal with because if this is your lever arm, the way that the string pulls is always perpendicular. So if that's 0.1 meters and you're pull the, the tension in the string is 10 newtons, the torque is very easy to calculate. It's R cross F. But um, how much of F is perpendicular to R? The answer is all of it. So it would be 10 newtons times um, the R is 0.1 meters. So that's um, 1 newton meter. Incidentally, if we were to have two strings, one was wrapped this way, and say the other one was actually um, this way, and let's say it was only 5 newtons, do you see how um, the one is trying to rotate the thing clockwise? This is rotating it clockwise, whereas this one is trying to rotate it counterclockwise. So this one is, it, if you ignore this, and, and you just pull down this string, and if that's a fixed axis, this thing will start to, to rotate that way. But now ignore this. If it were just this one on there, if it was just this force on this thing, then this torque, the torque due to that force, would actually, if you pulled down, it would cause this thing to spin that way. So what we're going to do is if we add these up, we gotta, we got to um, consider that one is clockwise and the other is counterclockwise. And so um, the net torque due to these two is going to be... Um, 10 newtons times 0.1 meters, so um, 0.1 newton meters, I, there's a dot there, decimal, uh, but you're going to have to subtract this one, so it would be 5 newtons times um, 0.1 meters, so that's going to be 0 0.5 newton meters. And so um, the net torque is going to be 0.5 newton meters and we'll say um, counterclockwise or clockwise. So it will rotate clockwise. Okay, uh, there's, here's a takeoff, a little bit more complex problem. What if you had two wheels that were fused together? So it's a wheel on top of a wheel, and these two wheels are fused together. If I took and rotated this at that angle, this is the axis right now, but if I took and rotated this this way, this would be what you'd see the profile of that thing would look like that. Okay, so, and the radius of the one is R and the radius of the other is 2R. And we're going to wrap strings maybe this way and um, maybe some will be wrapped around the outside. So, um, imagine then if I had a, a force, uh, maybe a, a force F this way and a force F this way, and a force um, F this way. Okay, do you see how uh, two of these are trying to rotate it clockwise? This one's trying to rotate it clockwise. This is trying to rotate it clockwise, but this one's trying to rotate it counterclockwise. If that were the only force on this, then this whole thing would start to rotate this way. Okay, so if I want to know the net torque on this, I would add these together and then subtract that one. So that would be um, F times 2R plus F times 2R Plus the last one would be a negative F times R. So that would be four, so that would be three FR. That's the net torque on that wheel system. All right, thanks.